Um, but let's get into the overall match preview. We'll look at the game in general. Um, obviously, Newcastle coming into this game, um, a bit of better form, I would say, than um, they have been generally this season. Last five games, two wins, two losses, and a draw. Uh, eight goals scored, um, nine goals conceded. So they're definitely leaky at the back. But look at that home form, though. Uh, unbeaten mm. in five, three draws, and two wins. So they're not. Um, winning lots but you know they're not they're very very hard to beat away from uh, at home at oh, st james's yeah. our away form as well coupled with that only one win in the last five as well yeah. so is there, is there something to say that maybe looking at that you know how they are at home how we are away is it fanciful to think we could go there and win based on that <sighs> change my prediction now. <laughs> <laughs> also how many have we won in the brown Phuket, I call it. Well, we <laughs> the Brown Phuket. Um, we <laughs> drew away at Fulham in the cup and lost on penalties. Mm -hmm. We drew away at City three three. Oh yeah. And we lost four two away at Brighton, I believe. Uh, so yeah. hasn't been the best result. Oh, we did beat Luton though one nil. Yeah. At okay. Kenilworth Road. So we did get a win there, but we don't have the best record um, in the in in that brew. I think it's a uh, cappuccino kit. I think they call cappuccino. it cappuccino. Cappuccino. Um, <laughs> But look, Newcastle, I think the, the, the lesson there is that Newcastle, doesn't matter how depleted they are, they're always a very, very tough team to play against. Yeah. But what I would notice is they do tend to concede lots of goals. For example, uh, at home to Luton, 4-4. Four, four. At home to uh, Bournemouth, 2-2. Um, at home to uh, Man City, they lost 3-2. Yeah. Um, at home to Nottingham Forest, they lost 3-1. Wow. At home to um, West Ham, just being, they lost 4-3. So conceding, uh, sorry, they won four three, but they conceded three goals. Yeah. So, uh, so that's going to be a basketball match. So they concede tons of goals. Is yeah. my, is my, uh, I guess my. Uh, what I'm taking away from that. And uh, I think with those games, they've probably had a better backline they're going to have even in this game they've got even more injuries. Um, yeah. But they do concede a lot, but they score. They're massive yeah. on the counter. You've got the Isaac, top heavy. But Isaac Barnes uh, recently. Anthony Gordon's been in fine form. Mm -hmm. Bruno Guimara's in the centre is a fantastic yeah. midfielder. Yeah. So it's going to be a really, really difficult, a good, difficult tie. But how do we kind of go about uh, making sure we're not getting hit in the transitions like a lot of the other teams and making sure we're really exploiting that depleted yeah, back line. That, that comes into like, who do you actually pick as your six? You know, and, and then like, how does Romero play? Does mm. he step forward a little bit? I think it's, it's going to be a, a, a game of who can dominate the, their opponent's final third, you know? Like who can like really put and dominate the ball in the other player, other team's half. Um, because it looks like both teams can score loads of goals. Who's got the better defence, though? I would say us, mm -hmm. by a long shot. You know, um, but then, you know, we, we, we kind of give a silly goal away every now and then. That's why I went 3-1, because we, we drop a silly goal. You know, even in a performance that should be a shutout, we drop a silly goal. Um, we've got the better goalkeeper. You would think that we would be able to contain. And then... our the way our attack is playing with the two fast wingers, you would hope that we would expose this weakness at the back. Um, mm. But the pro yeah, the problem is you look at our pre as you say our previous few games, yeah, and um, we we do have a ma massive tendency of giving away sloppy yeah. goals, yeah. Uh, slop big chances. If you look at our head to head with Newcastle over the last obviously five games, we beat them obviously battered them in December. Yeah. That was one of our best performances of the season. Well, we yeah. beat them four one. Um, although, you know, before that was one of the worst games in Tottenham's recent history, that 6-1 defeat at yeah. St. James's Park. That was our last visit there. We were 5-0 five, we five down within 21 minutes. And it um, obviously, a, a thousand memes were made of our watch along for that one, I remember. <laughs> um, the pre previously to that, obviously, we beat them under Conte 5-1. Um, the one we won, we lost 2-1 at home was when Lloris gave away that stupid goal to, Ka to Callum Wilson. So, a yeah. bit of a mixed result over the last uh, five games. But in terms of, obviously, the most recent one in December, that was also against a much depleted Newcastle team. Yeah. I remember Trippi had a very difficult day that day. And um, they, they, I think they, this season they've been, like, the worst hit team. And it's been just, like, never-ending. Mm -hmm. You know, have they... It's been like almost all of the season, you know, mm. after a certain point. And, th and this is the problem. I think this is what um, Andrew was alluding to with like 
getting into the Champions League when you're not really ready squad wise, mm -hmm. and that sums up them because like all the games they've played early in the season have have completely destroyed their team, you know. And I think, yeah, you can see here the extensive injury list they do have. Botman, Lascelles, Tonali obviously suspended with his betting charge. Lewis Miley, Callum Wilson, Joe Linton, Pope, Almiron, Joe Willock, Livramento and Kieran Trippier. Wow. Um, unbelievable uh, kind of injury list there. Uh, yeah. Never ending almost um, injury list. And obviously even players like Lewis Miley who had a lot more game time yeah. because uh, they had injuries. He's now injured. That's a lot of key players Some, some people argue though they have this over aggressive style that's how they like kind of um, close the gap like the quality gap by being yeah. really aggressive being on the front foot um, making sure they're outrunning the opposition and maybe Eddie Howe hasn't adapted to those extra games and, mm. and because he's kept with that aggressive kind of style it's led to a lot of his injuries and look you know, you could argue with Spurs changing up the way they've played. Has that caused a lot of injuries as well? Yeah. I think that aggression. So does Eddie Howe kind of have to take any responsibility for the amount of injuries the they've had? same thing as Burnley and Spurs. You know, like, obviously, Ange has a style of play. Bur Burnley come up with a style of play. And then the reality is, you know, you, you once you don't have the certain players to play that style mm -hmm. of play adequately then you're in a hiding to nothing. So you've, you've kind of got to adapt. And they haven't really been adapting because I think what you lose when you all of a sudden adapt, you can't just take your reserve team and go and chain them a different style of play, you know? Mm. It's, it, but then it's this idea of like, you know, in the Prem, it seems like you need a plan A, plan B, plan C, mm -hmm. you know, because you play three different types of class teams, you know? Mm. So, um, yeah, I think that's just the, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm shocked at how many of their mm -hmm. key players are out and how long it's been for mm -hmm. some of them, these players. Um, I mean, when was the last time we even saw Joel Lennon? Like, early a long part time. of the season? Uh, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you're looking at that lineup, though, look, it's very, very depleted. I think the big areas for sure um, there that, that, that you've got a target, obviously, those two centimeters, Anderson and Longstaff, I think if, they, if, they, if them two are playing there, I think those have to be massively targeted because Bentancourt and Madison have to think we can get the better of those two. Obviously, Bruno Guimaraes is a fantastic yeah. player, but he can't do it by himself. And yeah. obviously, Longstaff and Anderson, hard workers, but not the best technically. So you put them under pressure, you think they, they you have the feeling they might buckle. And if you look at that back line, I yeah, think a... Johnson and Werner have to be licking their lips to those fullbacks. Everyone, yeah. Sonny's got to be thinking he can get in behind Burn, hmm. you know, quite easily. And you think Kraft, you know, he's uh, not the... Uh, and Lewis Hall is also a doubt for this game, so he might not be 100% fit. you got to think if Johnson and Werner, if they're running at their fullbacks, just get the ball to them as quickly as possible, they might have big, big struggles dealing with them. Yeah, and I think looking at that lineup, you, you would think Madison's got to be licking his lips as well, get on mm. the ball and then start, like, really dominating um, just in the second third of their, their opposition. Um, yeah, I think... Pff, OK, I'm changing my... my <laughs> Changing your bag, but it's a difficult one. one because <laughs> it's a difficult one, is it? Because you, you look at their depleted team, you think how it can why be quite should, inspiring. Like, why should we not be confident winning that game? And then you, but then you look at their home form, you look at our away form, think, you know, based on that, it's going to be very, yeah, very difficult. We're not exactly so, flowing in, in the most confidence. You know, we've got mm. a few wins again, uh, you know, under our sails, but um, and then them at home, knowing that you've got a whole, it's like almost like a hit to nothing. You know, it's mm. like, you know, let's just go for it. You, you know, know, let's just fight. You know what could be the difference maker? A bit like the Villa game, where they had that extra game, so they were very tired going to that second half, and we ended yeah. up running riot. Obviously, with their depleted team, if we can kind of keep it, like, make sure they don't have, like, a one- or two-goal lead going yeah. into that second half, I think that's where we can take advantage because we're yeah. going to we're going to have the fitness on them yeah. um th they're not going to be, be able to change it as well with their substitutions we're going to have more options yeah. off the bench yeah so i think you would think long, the longer the game goes on if we're level or even winning going to those latter stages you would think that's where we can take full advantage of their depleted yeah. team and this is where like um you know people highly criticize your spurs fans highly criticize that we're a second half team mm. you know but it's because we like try to put a team to the sword for 45 minutes and break them down, break them down, break them down, then keep, then go even faster mm -hmm. and then try to put it on them now that when they're depleted. With a, with a team that is depleted with injury, 
that's not going to be good for them mm -hmm. because they're going to want to like take things slow, reserve, you know, like maybe a couple of, um, you know, switches might help them a little bit. But if you're putting the team to the start, if you're just trying to dominate, hold the ball, constantly make them think, move from side to side, you know, don't tire yourself out in the second half, bang, just and just lay it on them nonstop. That's where you're going to get a lot of goals, I think. Mm, I completely agree. And I think looking at that back line, looking how depleted it is, if we can't take full advantage of that, that would be some 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 sort of concern. Because you even look look at the lights of, you know, West Ham scored three goals there last yeah. week, and uh, Luton have got four goals there recently. So yeah. you've got to be thinking at least we ha look. There's one thing maybe um, not creating the chance. Um, sorry, creating the chances, and obviously if you're finishing off on the day, then it is. But if we go there and we we get dominated, we don't not able to create chances. That'll be a big concern because I'm looking yeah. at that midfield and and defence. I'm like, if you can't create chances against that, that's yeah. that's a big worry. Especially now when it's coming to the crux of the season, where a lot you you've got to be thinking as players that like. Oh, little bit of an eye on next season we got to get you know get champions league there's a, there's a you know a lot of games next season i want to be in this squad i want to kneel down my position mm. there is a fight going on for for the mid, midfield positions you would think like this whoever plays whoever starts in the midfield or even whoever's coming on goes i need to make my position you know so so you would hope that players are good at this game with as much as they're in on the line you know like villa's playing arsenal this week mm -hmm. you know we kind of need this win can't really mm. slip up there might be a draw there with, the, with arsenal Liverpool and City coming up. We can't we got one this, this game? This is one of the games actually you're looking. And that's a, always a problem for us because when we go into games, going we just have to win this game. Yeah, it's you always know. a worry. But then we'll the probably lose forward. this and beat City or something. That's usually yeah. how it works for Tottenham, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but I agree. This is the kind of game where if you look, if you're earmarking potential points in our next seven games. Um, obviously nothing's taken for granted but this is a game where you're thinking we, if we can get three points here it'll be a massive massive bonus yeah. going into the last stretch and with Villa probably going to drop points on, on the weekend as well it can go a long way extending that gap and giving us a bit of breathing space it's yeah. interesting looking at Newcastle though they've been having such a poor season but currently eighth only two points off sixth so you know, do, do, you know, given how difficult their season's been, if they ended up sick, that would be, yeah. be quite decent. Considering, yeah. And they'll yeah. probably, they'll, that, they'll definitely take the pressure off Eddie Howe. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's it's been tough. They, they don't have a bad style of play. I actually love what Eddie Howe has done there in his time. Um, he's got the, like, he's got the best sort of players, like Longstaff and, mm. you know, um, they've, Especially when they're at home, I seem I I feel like they have something else power in them, you mm -hmm. know, like all that energy. They're like a club that it's horrifying to go there, you know, because that that crazy energy in that stadium just like lifts all the players. But um, you'd still have to think um, they would be coming to this game. Eddie Howe would be coming to this game with a, a with way more of a head scratcher. Going, how do we handle the Spurs team? You know, like. The only way we should be kind of like dropping points is if, is if like four or five players all have howlers, you know, mm -hmm. in, in different departments mm -hmm. of the pitch. But um, I, I also do see it like it's a, it's a bit of a hit to, to nothing for them mm. because it's like we're so compounded with injuries. The, the expectation's got to be off. Let's just go out there, give it a go. Let's see what we can get. And when that, that kind of mentality is on... That's where they could be very dangerous. And also, a the, wounded animal is very dangerous when it's backed in a corner. One hundred percent. And they've got great players, especially in the yeah. forward line. Especially yeah. in the forward line, and they're very good in transition. I remember watching that game early in the season. They played Man City, and they were just, uh, especially in the first forty-five minutes, they just really. Um, clinically were hitting Man City on mm. that counter. J Gordon was running right down the left-hand side. Isaac was causing so many problems in behind. And if obviously we know we're going to be pushing up, we're going to be, you know, dominating the ball. And if we're not careful, they can definitely hit us in those transitions. Yeah. And if we give them too many, if we give them too many transitions, they've got the players to hurt us. Yeah. If we give them two or three good quality chances, they've got the They've got the players who are good enough to score two or three goals yeah, yeah. Uh, in, in those chances, and all of a sudden you can find yourselves two 0 down yeah. without even knowing. So that's what you've got to guard against. You just got to make sure that we're not um, sloppy on the ball, giving them these early chances, uh, giving them the advantage going into that second half. Because I do think the first half for Newcastle, where it could be won, I yeah. felt like come the second half they might start to tire a bit. They're not going to have the subs to re, uh, yeah. regain energy or, or, the, or the good enough subs to replace Barnes and Gordon and Isaac. Yeah. So if we can keep them out for the first forty-five minutes, even. If 
if it means what going in at nil nil yeah that could be really crucial to just making sure we win that game because they are one of the most dangerous teams on transition because i feel like if it turns into a basketball game, that will suit us because I think their defense yeah. is so depleted. They won't want it to be that. I think if they sit back, kind of play play it like they did against Man City, they did end up losing that game 3-2, but they were very close to holding them out. I think De Bruyne mm. came on and saved them that day, yes, if I remember, I remember rightly. Yeah, yeah. Um, so if they play as similar to how they played that Man City game, that really organized tight, making sure that there's no spaces in between the lines and hit them in the transition, that's when this can become a dangerous game. Yeah. We've just got to hope that... Especially I- with the way that we play with our, our like fullbacks going very central and then going up in a... a- Mm. You know, really affecting the attack. Sometimes, I mean, like Gordon and Barnes will be licking their lips with that. The Paro's goal last week. He's in the box. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, if a team's going to want to play, you know, their goalkeeper gets the ball in hand, a long throw, and they, that's it. Exactly. You know, be right in behind. As much as I think Johnson and Vernon will be licking their lips at. Um at, at the two Newcastle fullbacks, I also think Gordon and Barnes will be thinking, if we get a transition, all that space to, uh, to run into, I'm going to yeah. be in 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 a dreamland essentially. Yeah. If we allow them those transitions, and even like Van de Ven's speed won't really be much of an asset at that point because he will be then covering, you know, other players. You mm. know, Romero had to go and cover here. Van de Ven has to move over. Then there's space. If it's three versus two at that point, you so, bet, so it you know? can be a very very dangerous game. So we just have to make sure that. We're not being sloppy. We're not giving them very easy uh, um, reasons to transition. If we're, if we're allowing them, if we do give the ball away, make sure it's in their box so we have time to get, get it back and not giving it away in the middle third and that kind of thing. Does that change how you probably view who should have been the, the number six then? Because, <sighs> because us getting on the ball and turning and also us protecting our defence and, and being as a block might come in very useful it's certain the last few minutes of the first half we just need to not lose a goal mm. you know the second half if we are up you, you need to protect the league things like that like, so are you saying it should be Hoybier or you should part of me starts to think that might have been you know the right decision um just, just considering on how he came in, but then again, if it is like five minutes from the end and he does one of those Hail Mary it's, passes yeah, and gives a ball away, <laughs> that's the problem. Right. I kind of feel like the reason why um, I I would actually play Hoybier in, in this game, I think he'll go Basuma, but I, why I'd play Hoybier is because when, let's say they're looking to transition Newcastle and they're looking to play it through the centre, I think Hoybier is much more likely to press and nick the ball back yes, than yeah, Basuma. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Basuma's going to be a lot more reactive. He's going to step back and, and there he'll allow them to play through and then he'll try and, like, um, win a, a tackle a dribbler or something like that yeah. whereas bring a guy down in a dangerous area Hoybier, exactly Hoybier <laughs> is more likely to try and nick the ball or, or when there's a pass trying to get on top of them yeah. and then he, he tests your technical ability a mm. bit more and when you have Longstaff and Anderson there I think they would they, they would not like that but like Hoybier in their face all the time just like yeah. closing them down whereas Basuma is a lot more, is a bit more reactive. He likes to step back a bit, a bit more. I don't think he likes to confront as much. As much as he can do the defensive job, he does make tackles, inceptions. I feel like he doesn't confront as much as Hoybier. So I think that combative nature would lead to Hoybier just allowing us to dominate them a bit more. But then again, I feel like uh, Basuma will allow the, us to dominate them a bit more in possession in a way. Mm, so yeah. It's kind of pick your poison in a way, you swings around about. I'm just very, very worried about them winning the ball back and hitting us in behind very quickly. Yeah. That is what something we've got to make sure we don't we don't allow them to do, especially in that first half. Because yeah. if we allow them a goal lead or two goal lead and then we we allow them to sit back, mm. then we're in a bit of trouble. Yeah, because I, I see our attack is, you know when we, tr- we do this thing where we try to get into the opposite half and then dominate the ball side to side, side which obviously drains your mm. opponent it's a good it's a good tactic obviously your stats go up and you're controlling the game but there's a part of me that kind of wants their midfielders to come into our half mm-hmm. and try get and try to do that to us because i think our ability to get madison on the ball and bang through the lane mm-hmm. or someone you know our speed in behind like puts them to the sword you know like Poro stepping up and then putting the ball through mm-hmm. the lane and then sun's in with space behind the defense mm-hmm. i think we're way better when we play like that whereas if when we go up and it gets super super tight, tight i think it yeah. makes it a little easier there's no for space defense. for Ronan johnson to run into yeah all that kind especially of stuff. the way we want to play you know Go, go fast and behind, ball across goal, you know? Mm. Um, so, I, so and then even when you think about playing that way, 
I think Hoybier is a little bit better mm. because he can get the ball turned and he can put a beautiful long ball or a ball through the lane. That's his kind of like almost his game, you know, that he does mm. all the time for Denmark as well. So it's an interesting one. To play that way, though, you have to kind of have a... Uh, here's the argument for Basuma is you actually mm. have to have a, 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 a six who kind of goes deep and lets people try come on, mm. you know, and then because then it's like a little pass to the side and then we're away and then they're like, oh, Oh, yeah, gone, you know. So it, it is. It is horses for courses, you know. Some parts of me thinks, well, then maybe Benton cures the six at that point because he might be able to do that better. One play one. saw there, maybe. So yeah. I mean, it's it's a difficult decision that uh, Anderson has they, to make. They have the Anderson and and uh, Long and Longstaff with Gimaros playing in a double pivot or two setters or and and is Gimaros. I think usually it's Bruno just sitting. Oh, Bruno sitting in the yeah, six. Yeah, Bruno sits oh, in the I six. Deep line play, maybe. Yeah, wow, which is okay. interesting. Yeah. Um, he because he um, yeah for, for the, he they like him to dictate the place they have him mm. sitting the deepest usually, and that's one thing actually to think, thinking about that that's one thing we could take, in a way take advantage of because yeah. he he can get wound up uh, Bruno yeah, yeah. and he makes Madison a lot of fouls versus him he can, makes a lot, he of fouls. a lot of fouls if we yeah. could get Bruno sent off then the game's won I think because yeah. they they'll, they would have no control he's very good that that he could just him. You know, obviously, with a bit of help from Longstaff and Anderson, a uh, bit of you know uh, work rate, he can really uh, help dictate that midfield. He's that good. Yeah. So if we can wind him up, get on his uh, wrong side, and you know, get him to get a yellow, get, um, yeah. get him to get frustrated, then I think um, that could be a really good avenue to make sure that Newcastle aren't getting that advantage. That's an interesting battle. It could be one of the key battles of the match. Two mm. tens versus each other. You know, mm. Gamerish versus. Uh, Madison, you know, Madison of late has not had the greatest head on him. Mm. You know, true, uh, he could have been sent off as well last week. Sign up for the UFC. Last <laughs> week, you know? um, but they, but if, if, if they if they wind each other enough, someone could crack. You know, that's why it's, in, it's really interesting that they play him as a six because I think he's a world class ten, mm. um, and which is great if he's not not in controlling the ball around our box that's fantastic he did score the winner i believe last week didn't he against uh, fulham but from what i've seen he does usually tend to play um as the number six yeah a bit, a bit very central um mm -hmm. so it'll be interesting to see how, how he performs in 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 that game um, obviously there maybe like tonali or other players would have probably done the role and then he would have pushed up yeah, I think a lot will depend on how Eddie Howe sets up. If he's good, if, he, if he thinks it's a home game, we're going to go for it. Then I think that will massively benefit us. If, he th if he's a bit smarter and thinks, you know, if he tweaks us like he tweaked to Man City, they've got a much better chance of getting results. Even, I, even then, I think we still got the upper hand. But I think I'm a bit more scared of that kind of situation yeah, because that home game, they, you know, like you're saying, like they're they're not that far off. They can mm. they can get Europe, you know, all to play for, that. you know, mm. go after it. You know, that's I think we're hoping for is that they come out for a game they play, but then they could be in in great. You know, mm. they could have the the, the wind in the back, but we kind of I think a basketball game favors us definitely. more than them. I think know? definitely true. All right, well, having said all that, are you sticking with that three one prediction? It's a tough one. That's <laughs> nah, it's a little um, bit of a tough one now. I'm yeah, still sticking with 4-2. I'm, yeah, I'm sticking with 3-1. We're both going for Tottenham wins here, uh, which Josh well, King which will not be happy now about. You know, <laughs> we're be Tottenham now wins. we're definitely not going to win. <laughs> but pre look, Brains, thank you for joining me on today's live no stream. Worries. Thank you for talking about the Newcastle game. Let me know in the comments section below what your thoughts are on the game, what your score predictions are. That is all we have time for today. But looking forward to tomorrow, I'll be on the watch along with Barnaby Slater going through all the actions. Let's hope we come back from St. James's Park with all three points we'll see you all very very soon like subscribe and comment and as always come on you spurs